may be seated. Our scripture reading today is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen is not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended by as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Don. I do want to announce uh, Susan Malone, uh, I don't know where you are right now, but uh, your check for the offering was found in the parking lot, and we have it. <laughs> so rest easy. I know you'll be looking for it, but uh, uh, thank you uh, for that. Well, thank you for that good reading, Don, of this great chapter of, of 11 of, uh, of uh, Hebrews. We are wanted us to focus some this morning on our faith and how our faith is to to come alive and as we live out that faith uh, daily in our lives and and God has so much to teach us in in his word and and Luke I mean Hebrews 11 speaks volumes for us and I'm thankful that uh, we we have this passage because it illustrates to us the faith of those who've gone before us, who've lived it, who've experienced it, who have put their faith and trust in the Lord. And we, too, are called to put our faith and trust in God every day of our lives. Step out in faith and believe it. Step out in faith and believe in what God has done and is doing for us. Think a minute about your faith. And where are you in your journey of faith? Where are you as you seek to live out your faith daily in your life? What things are you confronted with that demand an act of faith. Think about that. What things are in front of us that demand acts of faith? Every day we're given the opportunity, if you will, uh, to live out the faith to live out the faith before others. Are we pursuing the real one in our faith? Are we pursuing only what we can feel and touch and see? Are we willing to believe in what is beyond our Comprehension. Are we willing to believe what God can do and is doing in the lives of people? 
And have we given a witness? Have we thought about our own lives and what, what has God done in our lives? God wants to do so much for us in our lives and, and be present in what we do. It's the faith. It's what we believe about the things that matter most. Take that faith away and we have nothing left, according to Hebrews. In fact, we can hardly even approach God unless we have faith. Hebrews 11 reminds us of the importance of our belief in what God has done. If what we believe makes any difference, then it has to change the way we live. If what we believe makes any difference, then it has to change the way we live. Think about that. How has your faith shaped how you live day in and day out? Think about that. It has to change the way we live. And by faith, Hebrews tells us, the biblical characters of the Old Testament remind us again and again of just exactly what God has done. And we are to live that faith out in a real way. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Think about that. Faith, we understand that the universe was formed as God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And then the writer launches out into the different experiences of, of those who have gone on before and live the faith. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. I love the Old Testament, the stories that point to those who stepped out in faith and believing what God could do. I love that story about Enoch. It's a very short story. Enoch was a man of faith. The scripture says he walked with God, and God took him. He was one of the few of two in the Bible that didn't even see death. He was so faithful, and God took him. Wow, what a faith, what a faith. There's a story that I wanted to share of American journalist and lawyer Tim Rusert. More than 16 years was the longest serving moderator of NBC's Meet the Press. Perhaps you remember Tim Rusert. On June 13, 2008, Rusert invited John Meacham to appear on Meet the Press to debate noted atheist Christopher Hitchens. Tim suggested to Meacham, you got to come down and defend the faith, brother. You got to come down and defend the faith, brother. It's the faith, brother, Tim Ruchert suggested. It's the faith. Later in the day, Tim Ruchert died of a heart attack. Someone wrote of Tim Ruchert Tim Ruchert did not pursue false gods, he pursued the real one. He did not pursue false gods. He pursued the real one. What a great tribute said of a public figure. He pursued the real one. It's the faith. It's what we believe about the things that matter most. Take that faith away, and we have nothing left. I got nothing for you, is what Hebrews is telling us. Without faith, 
what do we have left? Our scripture from Hebrews 11 reminds us of the important part that faith can play in our lives. It can change the way we live. The biblical characters in the Old Testament and New Testament can help shape our lives even today, even though they've been gone thousands of years. If we just could look at what they were able to accomplish because of what they believed. In 1860, the motto, In God We Trust, was added to our currency. In 1860. In God we trust. In 1954, the phrase under God was added to our Pledge of Allegiance. In God we trust. Under God. Are we a nation, someone might ask, under God? Can we really say we trust in God? If you believe the news media, there's a lot of distrust in our world. We're not a very trusting people, as we may have been. We sometimes don't trust our government leaders. Sometimes we don't trust our bosses, our neighbors, our doctors, even our pastors. Do we ever trust God? Think about that. Where is our trust? I think the thing that gets in our way of trusting God is usually our fallen nature of humanity. The fallen nature of humanity gets in our way of trusting God, and that is called sin. And many of the tragedies that we read about and hear about in the world are a results of human sin. We don't have to blame God for it. But we like to, don't we? Do we take faith for granted is a question we might ask. Do we struggle with our faith? It might be shocking to you. But there have been times in my life where I struggled with faith. In fact, I remember... 100 years ago in seminary as the professors were talking about all these things that we are to believe in, I, I wrote down the question, do I really believe this? Do I really believe this? The struggle of faith is real. There's no sin to struggle with our faith. Let me put that out there. Don't think little of yourself if you struggle with faith. There are some things that are just mind-boggling, and we can't comprehend it. And, uh, but I'm thankful that we've got a God that is far superior to our way of thinking. Times of struggle with the faith. I believe God understands the tension of faith. Think of a minute, the apostles... Reminders of faith, doesn't it? Let me suggest to keep faith, we need to rekindle what God has done for us. And Hebrews 11 is a good place to start. Rekindle and remind ourselves what God has already done for us. Hebrews 11. Spend some time with that chapter this afternoon. Don't do as some... Make up your own religion, as some have done in our world. We've got more religions now in our world than <laughs> Carter's got pills, as I always say. It's amazing. Think about your faith. You know, as, as we every Sunday, we've gotten to this routine of repeating the Apostles' Creed. This is what we... This is our faith. This is what we believe. And we need to give it some thought and attention to what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. 
maker of heaven and earth. We can celebrate that, what God has done in our lives. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven. We believe this. This is our faith. If someone asks you what you believe, you can recite the Apostles' Creed. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this you will come to judge the quick and the, the dead. We don't know when Christ is coming back. But he's coming. Believe me, he's coming. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Catholic, Holy Catholic Church. And that means, Catholic means universal. I believe in the universal church. I believe in the universal church. I believe that, that men and women of faith everywhere, we make up the body of Christ, the church, whether you're Methodist or Baptist or, or Lutheran or Episcopalian. We're one body in Christ if Christ is supreme in our teaching. If Scripture is primary in our belief. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. The communion of saints. I want to give you a little secret. You're going to say, man, he's really flipped out. You know, back when we were preaching and none of you were here, none of you, you weren't here, just me and the camera and John, poor John. In my mind, I thought of you. Now, I don't know where you all sit, but I pretty much know where some of you sit. And I thought of all those saints that have gone on before us. They have died. God's called them home. I had a full house. A full house. Because I believe in the communion of saints. I believe in, in God's provision he gives us in his faith. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Lord knows I need forgiveness. Good morning, sinners. Now that's lousy. Good morning, sinners. You got to claim who you are. Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. I know some of you have a long way to go for sainthood. But, uh, but God loves you. And I love you. And as I think about those in the churches I've served over the years, and I think of the great faith that I've seen and witnessed in the lives of the laity of the church. Amazing. You see, inspiration for faith is not a one-way street. Inspiration for faith is a two-way street. We give it to each other. And I've always been amazed that the faith of the laity who, yes, Lord, we can do this. Yes, Lord, we believe this. Yes, God, you can do miraculous things. And some of you are walking miracles because of what God has done and brought healing and hope in your life. And I keep saying, do it again, Lord. Do it again. Bring this young man back from the throes of addiction, Lord. You can do it. Bring healing to that broken body, Lord. You can do it. 
Bring hope to the hopeless, Lord. You can do it. There is nothing that our God can't do. There's nothing that our God can't do. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? It's, it's a gut check for faith today. That's what this is all about. Because I, I believe we need this in our lives. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, for it's the gift of God. God has given you a gift of grace, forgiveness of your sins. Take that and run with it. Believe in what God can do. The resurrection of the body. That's part of our faith. That on one day in the future, God will raise up the, the bodies of those saints of ages past. The resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. You see, eternity... Eternity doesn't begin in our lives after we're dead... After we've died. Eternity begins when we become believers in Christ. Isn't that wonderful? That eternity begins when we have turned our faith on to Christ. I think it was Dwight L. Moody who once said, One day you'll read in the newspaper where Dwight L. Moody has died. He said, don't believe a minute of it. At that moment, I will be alive more than I've ever been. We don't have to fear death. Death is just a transition time to eternity, to that place of eternity. That's what our faith can do for us. Now, I'm not ready to die. I got a fourth grandchild being born sometime soon. I got to see that little sweetheart. But when God gets ready for us, we go. I can see it, it stone my tombstone now. He went. That's all you got to say. He went. Now, some of you think, well, he went fishing. <laughs> he went golfing. He went, he went, he went. It doesn't matter. Now, God forbid that day comes soon. I'd rather it not be soon. But I'm like many of you sitting in this room. I've got less days ahead of me than I got behind me. And that's okay. I can live to 125. I'm going to set that record. All in God's time. Think about our faith. And Enoch walked with God and God took him. Another point I want to suggest about faith. Without faith, standing against the world won't go so well for us. Standing against the world without faith won't go so well for us. It'll defeat us. But with faith, we don't have to succumb to the ways of the world. By faith, we don't have to give in to the world. By faith, we can say, I'm going to stand my ground as a believer in Christ. And I'm not going to buckle to the pressures of the world. Without faith, standing against the world won't go so well. We can see that in our world today, in the lives of people who are in turmoil because they have no anchor in their life. They have no faith. No faith. 
Noah had faith. I love that story about Noah. 120 years Noah preached. He gave it all. He preached the truth. He called those around him to repentance. Repentance. The end result was he only saved his family on the ark. Think about that. His faith inspired those that were with him. Moved them. They believed because he did. He believed. Your faith is important, not only to you. Get this. Your faith is not only important to you. Your faith as a believer in Christ is important to those around you out there in the world. You never know when you're going to be given the opportunity of illustrating your faith. And it's how we live and move and have our being on planet Earth. Do others see that we are people of faith? Are we ashamed of that? Do others see that we believe in the Word of God, that we believe in the church, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to change hearts and lives? Do we believe? Do we believe? Faith can make a difference in our world. I believe that. I see it happening in your life. Others are seeing it in your life as well. Faith, do you have it? Will you live it? Do you have it? Will you live it? Let's pray. Gracious God, your word is ever so powerful to us. May we live out our lives in faithfulness to you. That others can see that faith in what you do. Not in what we do, but in what you can do. Guide us, O oh God, as we seek to do your work and your will. In Christ's name we pray, and all God's people said,